we saw how fork works and then we also saw that um, what fork does is start a new process called a child process and then typically what you do is the parent process waits for the child to finish before uh, moving on or let's say ex exiting so we saw that typically the way fork is used is we call fork in a in a parent process the return value will be different in the parent versus the child so as soon as you do fork not only do you have the current process running as the parent but then you also start up a brand new process you can think of it like this two lines of execution or two threads of execution you, think, you can think of it like that and then the parent goes on and executes all of the code in the parent part so how do you check what's the parent part you check the return value of fork if that return value is not equal to zero, that be, it'll be that it'll be not equal to zero if um, if you're in the parent, because what fork returns to the parent is the process ID of the child. Okay, so then so what you do is you check if the return value is not equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, you know you're in the parent. You got the child PID, and you execute the parent code. At the very end of the parent code, what you want to do is call wait. What that does is have the parent wait for the child to finish before moving on. Okay, it's a very good thing to do, and we'll we'll see why in the lab. The other part of this big if block is the child code. So if you remember that fork returns twice, once in the parent, and then it returns also in the child, and in the child it'll return you a different value. It'll return the value zero, so you can check an if statement it's not equal to zero parent else child execute all the child code and then at the very end you can exit so the wait is usually almost always it's used by the parent to wait for the child to finish so how do you use wait there's a couple of different ways and when we use fork we it turns out almost all the time this wait is all you need Later on, we'll use threads, and when you use threads, you want to use this wait PID. That is, wait for a specific th um, thread that has a certain process ID number. Okay, as before, with a lot of function calls, you need to pound include a couple of files, and then you can call wait. It returns uh, something of type PID or PID underscore T, which is, as we saw before, it's compatible with int. And so this is how we typically pass, uh, typically call wait. We set up an integer variables, assign it equal to zero, and wait and pass in. When you wait, you pass in a pointer. So that's what this means, int star status. And the reason we do this is because wait can now modify this, whatever status is pointing to. In this case, what we do is you pass in a pointer to status so that it actually changes weight actually will change the value that's stored in this variable okay and then it'll return the child PID so now you can call weight you almost you don't have to check it but almost always it's safe uh, sometimes when you debug you have to check what it returns but once it's working this is usually safe to do you just call weight but if you're checking if you're not sure why a program's not working you might want to check the return value if it's equal to negative one, you know that there's an error. Otherwise, if there it's not negative one, you know that wait worked and it and it sort of only continues that it's go it returns from wait or wait returns only when the child is done. Let me say terminated. Okay, so let's take a, a look at another set of um, function calls. We saw how fork works. It starts a new process that executes the same program as the original, starting from, not from the beginning, but from the point at which fork was called. So that's another thing I want to point out is that when fork, when you call fork, it doesn't start a brand new process that's a copy of the parent and starts in the beginning. No. All of that code that's before fork in the parent is assumed to have executed also in the child. That's how we want to think about it. So you start a child process and you start execution after the fork. Okay. So you might ask, well, if fork can start a new process that executes the same program as the original, well, is it possible to have fork start up a new process and run a completely different program? Well, not fork exactly. 
but we can use fork in combination with the exec family of system calls to do this. So you can have a C program that starts up a completely different program. And so you have to use exec. The One of the common ways to use exec, there's actually different variations of exec because they are so useful. They are almost the same, just there are some slight differences and they're very important differences. Now if, take for example exec L. What this says is it'll run this program and, and this is just the ls program and it will run in, it will, when it runs it'll pass this as the first argument which is just the name of the program and then this will be the second argument which is just minus l it looks like a one but it's just an it's an l so this is just like running ls minus l you can have any number of arguments but it has to be terminated by a null pointer so null uppercase is a pointer so this is any number of strings terminated by a null pointer okay. these are all null terminated strings but those are you know null character the character null terminates these strings and the very last one has to be a null if you don't put this in nothing works and you spend a lot of time trying to debug it so running a existing program from a, a C program works if you use one of the exec function calls exec l is an example you don't have to use it but there's other ones there's uh, exec l is exec lp exec le all with different ways of passing arguments just take exec l once again you pass in in double quotes slash bin slash ls this should work now this is just sort of telling um, the program that exec l starts up in that program, argv sub zero, that is the first command line argument string, is this. Second one will be this, and so this is effectively running ls minus l. This has to be terminated with a null point in exec l. You can have any number actually. So you can have any. So this exec l is one of those uh, functions that can take a variable number of arguments. So it's something that we haven't seen a whole lot of before. Uh, it is available in C++ and Java except that we don't use it a whole lot. Exec L does have it, and so you can have any number of arguments, any number of strings, but the last thing has to be null. Okay, the exec V family of system calls works uh, in a very similar way. There's a couple of them. There's exec V and exec VP. And what they're given arguments are uh, arrays of string pointers. So you set up an array, like for example ls and then minus l and then the null pointer this is a null pointer to car and then you pass this whole array as the second argument for exec v so in exec l you just spell this out you put each one of these things exec um, you put ls in here followed by minus l followed by the null but if you want to call you can also call exec v instead of exec l those kinds of calls by setting up an array of strings remember car star is a string this says args is an array of strings and pass that as a second argument to exec v so here's how exec is different from fork whenever if ever you have an a call to exec what happens is this program no matter what it follows is complete stops completely so you, nothing after exec is executed unless for some reason exec fails that's very rare but assuming that exec works none of the statements after the exec is executed this actually even though you keep the exact same process id of this process you start from scratch and execute you stop running everything in this program and you start executing this instead of this program so if you let's have a program that all it does is called exec ls then what happens is when you run it it has a process id 4519 you hit the point in the program where you call exec everything over here is wiped out doesn't matter how many things you did back here all of that's forgotten all that's gone none of the code after exec is executed it's all just ignored and you wipe out all the memory you restart and you load ls and you run using the same process ID but you run a new program so the old program is gone and LS executes instead whatever you asked to execute in the exec 
runs instead of the executing process. So if you take a look at the process address space, when you exec a new process, whatever this program is, let's say process ID 4519, all of this is wiped out. Instead, you load a new program from disk. So this is a program that exists on disk. You load it in, in the text segment of the process address space will point to the ls command shared libraries whatever ls needs and then stack is reinitialized heap is all completely set to like no heap use uh, everything is sort of zeroed out start from scratch and then you start executing now it turns out fork is almost always used with exec or whenever you, if you want to use exec almost always use it in combination with fork so as before fork returns an id if it's zero if the return value of zero is a uh, return value of fork of zero, we know that we're executing in the child. And what typically what you do is in the child, you run exec. You don't have to, the parent can also do it, but typically this is what you do. So if you have this in a program, you know that when you hit fork, you start a new process, starts executing both the parent and the child. The parent checks if id equals zero, it won't be zero because in the parent id will be the, ve the process id of the child. So this will be false in the parent, it will be true in the child, so the child will execute the um, then part of this if statement. And let's say the very next statement is an exec, it loads some other program in the child. So the child, basically what happens is you fork a child and you execute some other program. That's typically what you do. The parent just keeps on going and executes some other code. So remember the in the parent, this is false, so you go on to the next statement after the if. So the way to look at this is you have your original parent program. It forks, start up an exact copy of the parent. The next thing that you do in the child is exec. In the parent, you move on to the statement after the if statement and ex go on and execute whatever code. The child wipes out this copy that you just made, loads, in this case, let's say the ls program, let's say exec was running ls, you would wipe out this, load ls, keeps the same process ID as the child. So these two process IDs will be the same. So exec does not create a new process ID. Fork does. Now it turns out shells like bash, kshell, all of these run fork inside a loop and all it does is fork a new child ID, I mean, sorry, child process. And in the child, you exec whatever command the user is typing in. So that's how just about all shells work. The parent, meanwhile, remember in the parent, this will be false and it'll go on to the next statement, and which all it does is wait. So the parent just waits for this command to finish. Once it's done, it'll go start up again and execute the next statement in the loop. Eventually, it'll do another fork starts another child, you execute the command that the user types in, and once it's done, um, it returns, and then w the parent is waiting for it to finish, and you go on and keep executing. So this is what a shell is. This is really what all the shell does is fork a new child process, enter, get the command, and execute the uh, user's command. You can combine fork, exec, and wait into one function call, which is called a system. So for example, this system is a combination of fork, exec, and wait. All it does is execute this command as if it were as if it were typed on the command line. When once it's completely done, it executes another command. So you can you can do all of this stuff instead of putting in this loop or uh, sorry, instead of putting in the if statement with the fork and then another if statement and exec to run inside the new child and then wait for the child to finish. Instead of all of that, you can use this one function call to do all, all of that work. So a very nice combination of fork, exec, and wait. So the main thing you want to get away from this is fork starts a new process, exec doesn't, it just reuses an old process. And what a shell does is just execute fork, exec, and wait in a loop. That's how a shell works. Thank you.